I mean, it seems like you're probably constantly doing things that no one has really ever done because it's it sounds very cutting edge. What, I would imagine that there's a, a larger team. Uh, can yeah, you yeah. explain like what that team looks like? Yeah, we're the the company itself is about 90 people last time I checked, and it's broken up into different project teams. Um, so basically, you know, we have uh, new tickets coming in, new clients, or you know, old clients who have new ideas or stuff that in you know, a business we've drummed up for ourselves. It goes through our sales team, so to speak. It kind of uh, qualifies, you know, what what kind of project is it? What kind of budget do we need? Which team could be able to handle this amount of work right now? Or which team has maybe the expertise? So the teams are mostly like set up to be uh, you know, broadly able to take on most types of work, but occasionally something comes along where we think, hey, wait, the, you know, those two developers from Team A, they really know this kind of project so we need to shoot it over to them um uh, so that's basically how it goes and each team is juggling a handful of projects depending on how much work it is what they have going on occasionally it'll be one enormous project that they just crunch on for a quarter of a year or half a year other times it might be three or four projects simultaneously that are all just kind of happening wow. and so my my role is is fun because i am the entire audio department, which means I'm on every team. Yeah, both, I'm yeah. in every project as long as it needs audio. You know, I have a touch point there, and so that can be very interesting to me because I, th I think um, uh, we have two locations: one in Hamburg and one in Cologne. And I kind of, since my perspective in the company has always been, I work with everyone practically all the time. I kind of forget that half the company maybe doesn't even know the other half because they're in a completely different location, but I'm I'm always uh, in, in touch with all of them. So These softwares you've told me about, it was Unreal and Unity. Unreal, Unity. Okay. I mean, that's, I mean, we always select, you know, the just the tech stack that makes the most sense yeah. for the project. I think anyone who's um, maybe coming from a game development background or has interests or experience making sound or music for games We'll recognize those two, and then um, you know if we're doing like web projects or app development, um, it might be something else to, depending on what the client's needs are, uh, you know where the project needs to get rolled out, whether it's uh, you know maybe a platform specific like the Facebook AR thing that I just mentioned earlier, or Meta, I should say. Well, to me, you know, I come from a background of learning how to do music production, whether it was studio or live, and then also a little bit of film production. And all of those tend to take place in a DAW, a more traditional, mm -hmm. you've got tracks, you record, and then you manipulate those tracks with with plugins. And you can even do routing with buses and things. But at the end of the day, it, it comes out as some file, either it's stereo, mono, or some surround format. What is fundamentally different about these software that you're using I guess it helps make it adaptable to user input. That's one of the main differences. But yes, can you explain exactly. how, how that works? Yeah, I mean, if we if we go to the kind of the fundamental difference of it all, you know, you have linear media that you consume from start to beginning, and you have interactive media, which will change depending on how the user interacts with it, right? Um, so if you're making sound for a film or sound, you know, producing an album, you're producing those finalized files that are just, that's the way it is. We've printed the mix, it's done. Uh, we might have different formats if it's going to Dolby Atmos for the cinema or you know whatever it might be. But um, if we're talking about interactive experiences, games, you know, I mean, the gaming industry is enormous. So it's definitely uh, not a niche market, but you have to kind of, um, you're dealing with tons of assets. So if you're coming from a music production background, it would be like exporting all the stems and then the listeners are like choosing in real time which which stems mm. to mute or I don't know, I'm trying to think of an interesting metaphor, but you know, if, if you're playing a game, you know, a standard, a standard maybe, you know, adventure game, uh, Zelda or something like this, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're you're walking through the game and you have the footstep files, which are all individual audio files. And you have the sound of the wind, which is an individual file. And maybe that wind changes if you're up on the top of the mountain, it's mm. really windy. And if you're down in the plains, it's not as windy. Uh, so that might be different audio files. It might even be uh, a real time like uh, you know, synth 
engine that's creating just a whooshy wind noise. Uh, so there are lots of different tools to kind of create, adapt, uh, and and push real time audio experiences. Um, so we I would say like a triple A game like that is a lot more complicated than most of the stuff that I'm doing because we're doing like small one-off projects for lots of clients rather than building upon, you know, <laughs> in the case of yeah. Zelda, like decades of well, in, in Zelda, <laughs> that's like one that. project that would probably itself have dozens of teams. Yes, for, yes, yeah, enormous yeah. studios, um, you know, probably years of development. Yeah. Uh, so where you could think of uh, Demodern as, uh, at least in, in the projects that we do that are game-like or utilize those types of tools. It's like we're kind of making small game-fied experiences for yeah. our customers. Man, that's fun. Because I'm just thinking right now, as a, a person who's pretty new to this concept of game audio or, or even um, non-linear audio, mm -hmm. interactive audio, you called it. Yeah, non-linear yeah. is also something people um, say. So you, your footsteps would kind of be, the, you know, the, the footsteps you use, I guess, would change depending on the terrain you're walking yeah, of on. Course. But they would stay somewhat the same. Um, relative to your ears, right? You're always with your footsteps. Yeah. Um, then there's like these atmospheric things.